Speaker, I rise today in response to the question of privilege raised by my honourable colleague, the member for York Simcoe, in relation to the Prime Minister's behaviour last night. Let me begin by saying, Mr. Speaker, that it is troubling that we're having this debate. What happened last night was very unsettling for everyone in this chamber. It is troubling, but it is our duty to have this debate if we take seriously our obligations to uphold the respect for one another required in this House to do our jobs. The Prime Minister's behaviour in the Chamber last night was a violation of that respect. His behaviour behavior was unbecoming of a leader who has the privilege, and let's never forget it's a privilege, bestowed on him by the people of Canada to sit as Prime Minister in this place, just like every one of us has the privilege to sit in this place. In my nearly 12 years here, Mr. Speaker, I have never, never seen anything more disrespectful. In my nearly 12 years in this House, Mr. Speaker, I've seen nothing, nothing like we saw last night. We started this Parliament with the promise of sunny ways, but what we've seen in particular in the last few weeks is the furthest thing from that. It would be instructive, Mr. Speaker, to recap some of the events that brought us to this point. As you know, since you're, you yourself cast the, the breaking tie, the government came very close to losing a vote on a piece of their own legislation earlier this week. Now, on a Monday morning at 12.30, most Canadians are at work, and so are the rest of us, but many Liberals weren't. And that may have been embarrassing for the government, Mr. Speaker, but the government's arrogance and dismissiveness toward the work of this House nearly caught up to them at that moment. But instead of learning a lesson from that, the government and the Prime Minister has actu have actually now doubled down. Out of spite, and spite is pretty much the only explanation that I can find, they put a motion forward in this House that would, as my colleagues in the NDP aptly stated, put a straitjacket on Parliament. Or as my colleague from the, mem the member from Regina Capel said, is an attempt to unilaterally disarm the opposition. We had already witnessed the government move to cut off debate on other occasions in this Parliament, but this motion goes much further. It's as if they sat at the table with one another and asked themselves, what are all the tools that the opposition has to slow down our agenda, and how can we get rid of them? It's as if the Prime Minister and the Liberals don't want an opposition. They just want the government. It's as if the and the Liberals don't want a government and an opposition anymore. They just want a government and an audience. Which led us to last night's events. Let us not forget why we were in this chamber to vote last night. We were here to vote on how much longer we, as members of Parliament, would be allowed to speak on the government's assisted suicide bill. On a fundamental matter of conscience for millions of Canadians, including all of us in this chamber, the government had moved once again to shut down debate. That in itself, Mr. Speaker, was unprecedented. On the opposition side, we were here to vote, and we knew, certainly lose, the right to speak up any further for our constituents on this bill. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? The vote just wasn't moving along fast enough for the Prime Minister. Why should he be expected to wait patiently in his seat, like the rest of us, for a vote to begin? I watched him. He had just entered the chamber a few seconds uh, after I did. wasn't here for very long. When he decided to, when he strode across the aisle, I watched him as he grabbed uh, the official opposition's whip, my good friend by the arm. I also watched him as he yelled something so out of line that I will not repeat it in the house. I watched him as he collided with the member for Berthier Masquinonger, who was clearly shaken by his behavior and left this house. She was unable to cast her vote on behalf of her constituents. Who was clearly shaken up by his behaviour and left this House, unable to cast her vote on behalf of her constituents. Mr. Speaker, he was out of line. He had no business on this side of the House. He had no business anywhere but in his own seat. Everything he did from the moment he rose from his seat was unnecessary and it was unsettling. Lies in the face of any of the provinces, the promises that the Prime Minister made about decorum in the House. 
It was nothing less than an affront to every member of this House. Now, let's just imagine for a second that a Canadian experienced something like this in their own workplace, that they were about to sit down for a meeting, but it was running a little late. So the boss stormed into the room, swore at people, and then grabbed another colleague and pulled him over to the table by the arm forcefully. What would happen, Mr. Speaker? I think we all know what would happen. from the beginning, from the very first day, in fact, we've all had the sneaking suspicion that the Prime Minister thinks that the opposition is a bit of an inconvenience, or perhaps an annoyance and in the way of his plans. I'd like him to reevaluate that view, because I and we, just like him, were elected to be here. This house belongs to the people, not us, not me, and this not him. This house belongs to the people, Mr. Speaker, not us, not me. Mr. Speaker, the behaviour that we have seen displayed over the last few months, whether it's the eye rolls or the mocking of some of our members or the sticking out of the tongue or what happened last night, it's unbecoming. It's unbecoming of all members, but obviously unbecoming of a Prime Minister. His actions last night and behaviour are worthy of the strongest condemnation of this House. But beyond that, Mr. Speaker, only six months into its existence, the entire government's approach to this place and its members needs a serious re-evaluation. So I implore the Prime Minister to now take a step back and work with all members of this House to ensure that our privileges are respected, that our voices are heard, and that our votes are counted. Yeah. Nothing can change what he did last night. No offence that he caused all members and indeed all Canadians. How he chooses to conduct himself from this point forward will determine the result of this Parliament. And Mr. Speaker, what happened last night is not for us to fix. It's for him to fix. But he can do that. I have no doubt that we will see another apology, but those words have to be backed by action, action that demonstrates that there has been a lesson learned. It would be a good time, Mr. Speaker, to let members speak on the very few pieces of legislation that the government has without the threat of closure over their heads. It would be a good time to withdraw their extreme and aggressive motion to strip the opposition of any... Importantly, Mr. Speaker, it would be a good time to show some respect for the democratic voice of Canadians when it comes to changing the way, the way we vote in this country. I know the government has repeatedly said and dismissed the idea of a referendum, using the absurd reason that a referendum somehow doesn't include every Canadian. It's insulting, but when the Prime Minister shows the arrogance, dismissiveness and disrespect he showed last night, there should be no surprise when his government follows suit. It's insulting, Mr. Speaker, but when the Prime Minister shows arrogance or dismissiveness or the disrespect that he showed us last night, there should be no surprise when the government follows. This is an opportunity for the government to reverse course. It's time to put an end to this dismissive, arrogant, and disrespectful attitude right here, right now. So it's time, Mr. Speaker, to put an end to this dismissive, arrogant, and disrespectful attitude towards members, right here and right now. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has two options. He can continue on his current path of an unprecedented unilateral takeover of the House, to which I can assure him we will not be intimidated into submission or silence. Right. Or, or, Mr. Speaker, he can work with us. He can work with this House to ensure that we take the appropriate time to study and debate what comes before us by respecting the important role that the opposition plays in our parliamentary democracy, rather than brushing us off as an inconvenience to his agenda. But Mr. Speaker, it's our sincere hope that he chooses the second option and restores the dignity and humility to the office that he holds. Thank you.